Hi, my name is LaShawn Spotted Bear, and I want to share the Great Horn Owls from the museum collection with you. Aren't they beautiful? You know, when I look at these owls, I notice that they have patterns and colors all over their body. I notice there's a little bit of brown, some orange, and even some white. But I wonder, how did they get the name Great Horned Owl? Well, they're called great because of their size. They're quite a large owl. But where did they get the word horn? Well, when someone first saw this owl, they noticed these things right here. And someone thought they looked like horns. But you know, they're not horns at all. Some people think they might be ears, but they're not ears either. Well, what are those things sticking up on top of this owl's head? You know what they are? They're special feathers. They're called feather tufts. And the owls can raise them up, or they can even lower them too. Sometimes the great horned owl will raise them up when he gets excited. Sometimes they're raised up when he gets frightened. And sometimes the great horned owl will raise up those feather tufts to help him blend in or camouflage with his surroundings. Hmm, I wonder where do we find these owls? Well, many times they like to stay in trees. And that's pretty smart because those colors and patterns on an owl's body look very similar to the colors and patterns of a tree in its bark. So that's a great place for them to perch, to rest, and to sleep. Now, great horned owls are nocturnal animals. So during the day, that's when they sleep. At nighttime is when they wake up, they can fly around, and they can hunt. Well, let's find on the owl's body the part that helps him to fly. Do you see it? It's hard to see here because the wings are folded by their side. But on this owl, we can see those wings and his wingspan, where we measure one tip of the wing to the other side. And what I notice, this owl has very large wings. In fact, I have a wing of a great horned owl here. And look how big it is. You can get a close look and you can see that there's long feathers and there's even smaller feathers on top. And when I touch them, they're so soft. And that's really helpful for the owl because when these feathers rub together, they don't make a sound at all. In fact, there's a special part on the edge of the wing. It kind of looks like a ruffle. And so that actually makes the owl fly quietly or silently. Now, why would that be helpful? Well, that's so whenever he's ready to hunt, he can fly down and sneak up on his prey. They won't hear him coming. I wonder what else helps him to hunt. Well, let's take a closer look at an owl's face. Can you see it on this owl? Well, what I notice is that I can see two large yellow eyes and his eyes face front, just like my eyes. And he can see things that are far, far away, what we call binocular vision. But you know what this owl can't do? He can't move his eyes. We can, but the owl cannot. So I want to see you move your eyes. So can you take your hand and put it on your chin to keep your face still? And I want to see you move your eyes to the left, just your eyes only. Move it to the left and then move them to the right. And then I want you to look up at the ceiling and down at the ground. Yeah, so we can move our eyes, but an owl can't do that. Well, how does he see around him if he can't move his eyes? You know what he has to move? He has to move his entire head. And so if an owl wants to look left, can you show me what he might do? He'll turn his head to the left. And what if he wants to look right? He'll turn his head to the right. And if he wants to look high up in the sky or down at the ground, yeah, 
So he's always moving his head to see what's around him. So he's always watching, looking for food, something good to eat. So not only does he have good vision, he also has excellent hearing. But what are the ears on this owl? Well, you know, they're on the sides of his head, but we can't see them. They're hidden underneath the feathers. But if we could see them, they would just look like little holes on the side of his head. He doesn't have a fleshy part that sticks out of his head like we do. So he's always looking and always listening for food. Now, what kind of food would this owl like to eat, I wonder? Well, what we need to do is we can take a look at his beak and that will give us a clue. So you know what I have? I have a great horned owl skull with me. And the skull are the bones of the head. You may notice that there's a bony ring on each side of the skull, and that's what holds the eye in place. I'm gonna turn the skull to the side so we get a good look at the beak. You know what I notice about this beak? It's not long and pointed. In fact, it's rounded and curved, and there's a sharp point to the beak. I can also see that this skull has no teeth, just sharp jaws. So having a curved beak like this tells me this owl is a meat eater. And he does, he likes to eat other kinds of animals. Well, I wonder what he would like. You know what he might like to find? He might like to find a mouse. They do like rodents. You know what else he might find? He might even find a rat to eat. He could find a squirrel. He could find a lizard, a snake, or even a smaller bird. But you know what I think is so fascinating that this owl can eat? Let me show you. It's this animal right here. A skunk. Great horned owls are known to eat skunks. Now you know the skunk can protect himself. In fact, he can turn around he can raise his tail and then he can spray musk. And a lot of times the owls do get sprayed right in the face. But you know what? It doesn't bother the owl at all. In fact, he has a third eyelid or a nicotating membrane that protects his eye. It works like a goggle. Sometimes he gets sprayed in the nose with his, at his nostrils doesn't bother his nose at all because he has a very poor sense of smell, so the owl doesn't even smell the skunk spray. I wonder what happens when an owl gets hungry. Well, what they have to do is first, they have to find their food. So they're gonna use their eyes. They're gonna use those great big eyes and they're gonna look at the ground and they're gonna scan left and right until they find something that moves. It could be something as small as a mouse. Once they spy that mouse, then they're gonna fly down using those great big large wings, sneak up on the mouse, and then they have to grab it. Well, let's look at an owl's body and see what they use to hold on to their prey. What do you see? Are you looking at the owl's feet? That's what the owl uses. Not only does he use his feet to grab onto his food, but they also use their feet to perch or to sit on the branch. But when that owl's hungry, he's gonna open those toes wide. And as he gets close to the body of the mouse, he's going to grab a hold of it and use his claws to get a good grip. It may look something like this. Now those claws are very sharp. We call those talons. So they can curl around the body, but also underneath on the bottom of his feet, he has these little bumps. And they work like grippers too, to help him hold on. So as he's holding on to his food, he may eat the mouse on the ground, or he may choose to fly back up to a tree branch and perch to eat it. Now the owl begins to eat it. 
And what he'll do is he'll bend down, he'll grab it with his beak, and since he has no teeth, he's gonna swallow the whole thing. But what if it's a little big? What if it's as big as a rat? You can see how much bigger it is than the mouse. It's gonna be kind of hard for him to swallow this whole thing down. So you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna actually tear it into pieces. Well, how does he tear it? He doesn't have a knife or scissors. Well, what he'll do is he'll hold it with his feet and he can use that sharp point on his beak and he can tear it into smaller chunks and then swallow those chunks whole. The owl's body is gonna separate the fur and bones of the rat from its meat, muscle, and fat, what the owl really needs. So what happens to the fur and bones from the rat? Well, there's like a pocket inside the owl's body that collects the fur and bones, and it kind of compacts itself like a little round ball. And there's a neat way that the owl gets it out of his body. What he'll do, the owl will cough and cough, and out of his mouth will come what we call an owl pellet. And that'll be the fur and bones of the rat, which I think is really neat to study. Thank you for letting me share a little bit about the owls, and I hope you learned something new. Bye!